Hi everyone, this is Mari Carmen again, and I am translating another tutorial made by Gabriela Carita. This tutorial will talk about the determination of polluted lagoons by mineral waste with QGIS and the SCP plugin. These days we know that the water pollution by mining waste is very interesting for several studies. Mining and the treatment of the minerals are a significant source of pollutant contribution in diverse natural resources, for this case in the lagoons or lakes. The impact of a pollutant in the lake depends on the physiochemical conditions that affect the toxicity and the exposition degree related to the concentration and the time. So for this tutorial, we will analyze the behavior of spectral signatures of satellite images of polluted lagoons by mining waste. Mining waste. We will analyze the spectral signature of a zone of interest. We will be using the SCP plugin and QGIS 3.0. Our study area covers the Canchis Lagoon and the Pucro Lagoon. We can observe both lagoons and we can see that the Cachis Lagoon is affected by water pollution coming from a discharge of mining tailings. We can see it here in this discharge point. So here I have a virtual band set, but I also have the Google satellite image. So we can see that this lagoon the conscious one is being affected by pollution coming from the from the mines. And this lagoon is the Canchis Lagoon and this one is the Pucro Lagoon. Okay, so to analyze the area we have to download the satellite images. We have downloaded the bands from Sentinel 2 and we will use bands 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8A, 11 and 12. These bands have been preprocessed with the SCP plugin and the preprocessing allows to obtain the reflectance of each band and we have clipped the bands to the size of the study area. After preprocessing the bands we will associate and see the behavior of the spectral signature of each lagoon. For this case, I will combine the bands in natural color and in false color. As you can see here in the virtual band set, we have a natural color. And we can go to the SCP plugin. If you haven't installed the SCP plugin, you have to go to plugins, manage and install plugins. And here, right, semi automatic classification plugin and then click on install plugin after that you will have the the toolbar of SCP in here and you can click on show plugin and as you can see here in the band set we have all the bands and we are going to change the wavelength settings we have a Sentinel-2 image. So as you can see, the, the wavelength has changed and we need to know the number of each band. So in this case, we have here band number one, two, three, and as it goes down. And we can see that band number one is band number two in Sentinel and two is three, and so on. And now we can change the color of the image. Right now we have a natural color image and we are going to change it to a false color image, which will be band seven, three, and two. Okay, now we can see a false color image and 
we can check the bands again so band set and number seven is band number eight or near infrared band number three is band four which is the red region and band number two band three which is the green region of the spectrum so this false color image allow us to see um, how we can see more contrast in the vegetated areas and we can also differentiate the water bodies. So here we can see some red areas which could be natural grasslands and we can also see a brownish yellowish color around the lagoon this is the result maybe of the precipitation of some metals coming from natural pollution by mineralized rocks coming from higher areas or it could also be pollution coming from human activities okay so now we will be using a training file to determine the spectral signatures here we're going to go to SCP doc if you can't see the SCP doc you go and right click on this bar, toolbar, and you click on SCP Doc Panel. And we are going to click on Training Input. Here in the Training Input, we are going to click on Open a Training Input. We can go to the folder and find the training file. Okay, so now here we have three different classes. We have Laguna Canchis, which is Canchis Lagoon, Pucro, Laguna Pucro, which is the Pucro Lagoon, and Relave, which is the mining tailings. Okay, so we're going to select them. And we're going to click on Add Highlighted Signatures to Spectral Signature Plot. So as you can see, we have three different objects. In this case, we have the mining tailings, we have uh, Laguna Canchis and Laguna Pucro. Laguna Pucro is the, the uh, blue one the dark blue one, and Laguna Canchis, the light blue one. We can see that Laguna Canchis has a higher reflectance in the green region of the spectrum. So here we can see a higher refle reflectance in the green area of Laguna Canchis. We can also see in the satellite image the natural color one that it has a turquoise color and the other lagoon is dark blue. So we can assume that it has this color due to the pollution coming from mining environmental liabilities. We can also observe the spectral signature of the mining tailings and we can see that it has a, it has a higher reflectance with the wavelength. So we can see that the reflectance is higher as it goes to the infrared region. The signature is similar to bare soil, so it is reflecting all the infrared light. 
Some studies have shown that the pH of the Canchis Lagoon is acidic with a pH of 4.7 and it has metal pollution. There were higher concentrations of aluminum, cadmium and manganese. So we can associate the higher reflectance with the vibrational processes of the metals. Therefore, we can conclude that remote sensing is very important in soil and lake pollution. In this way, remote sensing can be very efficient to have a better analysis of a polluted zone, like the Canchis Lagoon. And this is all for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful for you, and we will see you in the next one. Please share it if you like it, and Thank you very much.